Uh, okay, so Apple just announced amazing technology with great intentions that might have just opened the wrong doors. <laughs> All right, uh, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Front Page Tech, of course, the show that gives you all the latest tech news from one geek that is me to another that is you. Uh, listen, kind of serious episode today, so no funny intro or jokes throughout the show. We don't usually cover really serious topics like this, uh, but I think it's important, so uh, let's just do that. Let's do the show. All right, so first of all, first for the day, story numero uno. We got some actual uh, tech news today. Before things get too serious, how about a Pixel exclusive for you, another one, that is. It's only been a few days since Google themselves came out and confirmed all of our Pixel 6 leaks, so why not give you a new one? This time for the Pixel 5a. Now, it's important to note that this phone will only be available in the US and Japan. Because of that chip shortage is going on right now, it was effectively canceled in every other market. But according to sources, I have been told that the Pixel 5a will launch later this month on August 26th, I, I think that's a Thursday, for $450. It is only going to be available for purchase online or in physical Google stores. The specs that leaked previously uh, by another report that I've seen online, those were a bit off, so here is the finalized info. The only color for this device is going to be mostly black. The display is 6.4 inches, not 6.2, 60 hertz, or you can force 90 hertz, so not variable refresh rate for this display. You just get to pick 60 or 90. The processor is going to be the Snapdragon 76 5G battery clocked at 4,650 milliamp hours. There is no wireless charging on this device and RAM is six gigabytes. Now we've been told that the device will have the same camera as the Pixel 5, so that same camera array from last year, be IP67 rated, and have a headphone jack. So there you go. I know a lot of you have been waiting on information about the Pixel 5a, so uh, there you have it. I expect to see it later this month. Okay, uh, let's do sponsor and then get a little serious. Hey, it's summer, which means you're probably just leaving your balls hanging out. Which is what you're doing if you're not using a VPN. Don't let everyone see your balls. Right now, WeVPN has their summer sale going on. Get 74% off and three months of free service with the purchase of a two-year plan for only $2.59 a month. Not only is WeVPN my favorite VPN of all of them, they also now unblock over 350 plus streaming services. That's more than any other VPN. Protect yourself online, don't let your ISP trace you, and unblock all of your favorite streaming services. Make sure to click that that link below to get started and of course a huge thanks to WeVPN for supporting the show. All right, uh, so last up for the day and just a heads up, this is going to be a touchy subject so hang in there, hear me out. I know there's going to be a lot of discussions down in the comments below so please just respect each other, be kind. Okay, that's all I ask right now. Yesterday, Apple announced new protections that they're going to roll out by the end of this year within iOS 15 that are made to protect children. One of them is a safety measure within the Messages app that will censor um, ex explicit photos. I, there, it's YouTube, so there's some stuff that I can't say, so just use context clues. I guess. Effectively, if enabled on a child's phone, if they receive an explicit photo of some kind, it'll be blurred within the Messages app, warning the user before they open it. And then depending on the age of that child, if the photo is opened, their parent or guardian will be notified. This goes for both receiving and sending. That is good. That is a good thing. I think we can all agree that's a good thing. But then the waters get kind of murky. See, this brings us to the second part of these new protections. Um, Apple will be effectively scanning your iCloud photos for child abuse material. Uh, we're just going to call that CSAM from here on out. This can all get pretty technical pretty fast, uh, so we're just going to... Let me just explain the basics to you. When this rolls out later this year, Apple will scan and detect CSAM images that are stored in iCloud photos and report them to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and contact law enforcement authorities. The way this is gonna work is that your iPhone will be able to scan images within your iCloud photos against known photos in the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's database, which is not publicly accessible. Like if you wanted to see what was in that database, you can't find it. If there's a match or matches and the number of materials exceeds Apple's predetermined threshold, 
it will go into manual review where an Apple employee will determine if the images and the user in question needs to be reported. Now, to ensure user privacy, Apple says that all of this scanning will happen on your devices. You have to have iCloud photos enabled for this to happen, so I guess that's a loophole, which is to be, well, not enable iCloud photos, but if you have that enabled, then before those images are uploaded to the cloud, your phone on the device will scan those images against those other images on that national database to find a match. Apple users, also called clients, store photos in iCloud. Apple would like to detect if any of these photos belongs to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's database of CSAM photos. If the number of these matches exceeds some predetermined threshold indicating systematic presence of CSAM, Apple will report the user to appropriate authorities. That is a direct quote from them, from Apple. So the scans happen on device and are only viewed by Apple themselves if the matches are made and the threshold is met. Though Apple is not disclosing what that internal threshold is. On the surface, right, this is good. This is really good. I mean, I think we can all agree that child abuse in any form is bad and protecting children is good. We all agree on that. Um, but I don't know, man, my gut, I feel weird about this. Hear me out. The real privacy concern is this. Listen, I do not want to sound like Alex Jones here. But I, I am going to be honest when I say that this technology worries me a little bit. Of course, we all agree that children should be protected and that Apple's announcements yesterday are for the greater good. But is that the point? Is the goal to start with children? Because protecting children is good and cannot be morally argued. I think this deserves its own conversation. Like, is this a gateway? to something else, to something more. How long before Apple just announces that, hey, uh, by the way, we're just gonna start scanning your iCloud photos for drug use or pirated movies, pirated music. I mean, yes, in its current form, photos have to be matched with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children's database. The photos in there are not available to the public and it is a very specific database with a very specific Purpose. But who is to say that this technology, this way of scanning, could not be implemented or connected to a different database, say like a national drug database of sorts, or anything else, any other form of crimes that you may have stored on your device? Who's to say that that will never happen? Can you comfortably say that you, that would never happen? Do we accept Apple being this sort of digital hall monitor or just straight up vigilante is that their responsibility and are we sure that they'll stop at only this form of crime who's to say that they won't expand this as they see fit i'm just trying to create a conversation here because once these doors are open it's going to be very hard to close them again and i'm worried that allowing apple to do this opens those doors but i mean what are we supposed to do not allow apple to do this obviously we can't say anything or argue against protecting children that would be morally wrong and maybe that's the point because if we argue against it well then it looks like we have something to hide or we condone child abuse it's tough it's a catch-22 i mean i'm already seeing people on twitter shaming or guilting other users who argue against this technology like what are you not against pedophiles how could you support child abuse this way of using guilt and shame to silence opinions that are opposite of yours is lame and in this case naive at best of course i don't support any type of abuse against children i think i've made that very clear that is not what I'm arguing, I'm arguing that the acceptance of this technology may lead to deeper privacy concerns, deeper privacy issues, and open up the doors to further scans of things less nefarious, especially in the wrong hands. And don't even get me started on what would happen if a government had a backdoor to this. And I get it, Apple is not the first company to implement something like this. Google does it, Facebook does it, but Google and Facebook do not promise the same amount, the same level of privacy that Apple does. Um, and I think that hurts Apple. Again, this is, a, this is tough because of course, 
None of us condone child abuse. We don't want that. This is for the greater good. Um, but I do feel weird about it. And uh, that's it. Let's talk about it down in the comments. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.